So we got this clean shave, courtesy of Dollar Shave Club, and I don't think I've ever talked about my shaving routine on this channel whatsoever. I pretty much shave, give or take, once or twice a week, depending on the circumstance and little cheat code I've learned. Probably not a cheat code, probably super obvious to you guys, but it's literally just shaving out of the shower, a nice warm shower, because your skin's all warm, relaxed, pores are open. You just shave, and there's a much less likelihood of you cutting yourself. I'm not Lex Griffin. I don't have just a crazy Viking beard, but it's a little cheat code that I learned. Dollar Shave Club's pretty much got you covered with all your grooming needs. You have oral care, deodorant, shower, and most importantly, shaving. Now, when it comes to shaving, as you guys see here, I got their basic starter set, which includes an executive weighted handle, right? And you got six blades that come along with it. And then you have three ounces of Dr. Carver's shave butter. And I was very pleasantly surprised with this stuff. Like any stuff that I've used in the past, like shaving cream, it's always been like a foam or like a inflating, just hypertrophating gel that goes on your face. And this stuff, it almost felt like it wasn't like that at all. It was just like a cream, almost like a lotion. But even just showering, I mean, even just shaving without coming out of a shower, anything like that, like nice and cold, no warm up, nothing. It just, the hair just literally just slides off your face. So I don't know how they did it. They got some magical formula going on, but it is definitely a 10 out of 10. So for a limited time, new members are going to get their first month of the Executive Razor and the Dr. Carver Shea Butter for just five bucks. After that, when the restock box ships in, it's going to be regular size products for regular prices. So if you guys want to capitalize on that, go to dollarshaveclub.com slash David Laid to get your first starter set and pretty much every single month on automatic, on loop, you're just going to get premium shaving utensils sent to your doorstep. Every single month, no more need to go to like CVS or Walgreens or for me shop right and just get overpriced razors just sent to you every single month. So yeah, that's that. Now we're going to get some food and we're going to train. You got some beef and rice bowl with some greens, and then a charred pineapple BLT, and then a Justin Cleveland with his Justin Cleveland burger. All right, it's time to get James's actual review of the physical tub in hand. James! Hey, what's up? Do you finally, know what's in my hand? It's finally your free workout that you've been talking about forever? James, it is here. Now, you're semi-familiar with the ingredients we've loosely spoken about. You've seen a picture of the tub. Yes. Now, just hold it in your hand. It's just How does it feel on just on the deepest level? Like, how does it, like, what kind of vibes does it resonate? Like, Mona Lisa 2.0, but, like, less expensive. Like, what are we talking here? Gives me a chubby. A what? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's good ingredients, though. You've got that 200 megs of oxiracinum. Which you never see. Which you never see. So your brain should really, really be pumped up. Plus, it gives you the, the terosylvan caffeine, which means it's going to be like a slower, a slower hitting. Have you ever sold anything with, with that caffeine, with that terosylvan co co caffeine coke crystal? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. They don't really make it anymore. It was hard. That was like the hardest thing to get. Plus, you have the hordenine, which actually makes everything last longer and more intensely. Up yeah. GPC, which gives your body more choline, which should improve the, the, the oxyracin effect. Yeah. Resin A, which slows down the breakdown of acetylcholine in your brain. So that actually gives more of an intensity when it comes to thinking. Yeah. And then you have the citrulline malate compound the agmatine sulfate for the better pump. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. And if that's between hy and hydrates, that's the TMG. Those are the TMG crystals. Yep, yeah, that's the TMG. TMG. Yep. So you should get a lot more sleep. Kind of James, I'm no longer going to have to come in here and just get like five scoops and pills of whatever we got lying around and match with my pre workout because I put it in my tub. Good. It'll save me having to lose all my stuff to you. It's good. Yeah. I know, like, it's actually a nice, it's kind of a nice. Let's, let's look at the design. Let's look at the design. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. It's just like, it's just like the fact that it's like plain, like it just like looks good. Like no, it does look sharp. Yeah. Everyone that like like tries to overdo it, like it's just like plain, like like that. I feel like that just like builds character on like the whole thing. <laughs> I agree. Couldn't agree more. No, no. When he gets when he gets more in, we'll get it. But I think it's I think he said two more weeks. He's got a couple of his own with him, but that's about it. I'm sorry. No, you're not yet. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna be able to get a, a bottle or two in this week or something. Yeah. Alright, I'll be here like any day after like 1 o'clock, right? Who's that? Somebody from a different state that wants your euphoria and wants me to mail it to him. I want to know if I can get a bottle of it from you. So I'm just going to do a little voiceover for today's workout, but I wouldn't necessarily call this like a workout because... I'm sure most of the videos that you guys see on my channel when it comes to the workout segment is like some high intensity, you know, PRs, lifting, it's just music blasting. And that's obviously not how every single one of my workouts are. That's just elite highlight real stuff. So I figured that I show you guys what I do on more of like a mobility slash rest day. And honestly, for the past one or two weeks, I've really been feeling just like super, super low, just energy's not there. Like, especially on this UK trip that I went to just from all the traveling and 
honestly, I feel like I have like a virus or something because I just really don't really feel that well. Um, so I haven't been able to like work out or I've voluntarily chosen not to work out super intensely, intensely lately because I want to kind of give my body some time to recover and not put any extra stress on my immune system. So today I just went into the gym and I didn't actually do a workout. I just did a lot of mobility stuff. So you guys see me foam rolling here and I honestly, I haven't really foam rolled in a pretty long time. And, um, as you guys know, I started squatting again recently because my lower back's finally good enough to squat and everything was going super, super well. My back's still fine, um, but I noticed as I was getting stronger, my knees were starting to hurt more and more. And then I would fall into an old habit of maybe taking Advil before I trained to mask like the symptoms instead of addressing the root cause. And I got to the point where I realized, okay, like this is not a sustainable issue. I need to figure out what's going on. And I've concluded that basically my quads are just way, way, way too tight, which is why after every single workout lately and just sometimes I come in on off days and I just foam roll them out and that's drastically helped me. And I, as is going to some advice to you guys, if you feel like you're having some knee pain, definitely try foam rolling your quads and your calves. That could definitely help and give it some time. That'll, that'll make things a lot better. It's definitely helped me, but I still have a ways to go because my quads are ridiculously tight. I haven't foam rolled them in years. So here I am. Just This is the only actual exercise I did today other than a set of uh, a few sets of hamstring curls, which I didn't actually film. But this is me just doing some hyperextensions because, like I also said in the past, one of my issues on squat is that because I'm so quad dominant that my glutes and hamstrings can't properly engage as much as they should. So just doing this exercise just activates some mind-muscle connection and just kind of gets a little bit of blood flow in that area, which is why... I decided to do some just body weight hyper extensions for like three or four sets of like 10 or 15. So yeah, that's pretty much all I did in terms of actual, you know, resistance exercising. And then for the rest of the day, I just did 30 minutes of cardio on the treadmill. And as you guys heard in one of my last videos, I talked about how I was getting into cardio and I've actually been really, really consistent with that pretty much after every single workout I've done anywhere from 25 minutes to an hour of cardio every single day. And I felt like drastically better. Like once you get off the treadmill, you have this nice head high, you feel really, really good. I've noticed it's been easier to eat meals after my workout, my appetites like boosted and I just have a little bit more energy throughout the day. I feel better. And I notice that when I'm actually working out, I have like a little bit more endurance and I feel like that could indirectly lead to more gains because a common thing people like to say, and I definitely used to say this in the past, was that, you know, it's silly or it's stupid to do cardio when you're bulking because the whole point of bulking is to put on size and get big and get strong. But I don't really agree with that anymore because one, cardio has insane cardiovascular and just overall health benefits, which you should be concerned with before you're concerned with like how you look on the exterior, right? Your health should come first. So it definitely helps you from a health perspective. And two, even if you're bulking, let's say you burn like 300 calories doing cardio, you're going to, the amount of appetite that's going to be stimulated from that cardio session, you could hypothetically eat, you know, twice as much food or maybe 30% more food than you otherwise normally would after your workout. So you're going to actually, it could indirectly help you eat more food and bulk better and also give you better cardio endurance. So while you're actually working out, you could have a better, more intense workout. So I overall personally just really, really recommend cardio. Um, I'm going to be doing it pretty much honestly, like for the rest of my life at this point. And I also consider doing yoga cardio also. And another hobby that I want to get into in the near future, you know, once my shoulder kind of heals and all the little aches and my pains go away, I want to do some jujitsu, which I'm pretty, pretty fascinated by, but I'll talk about more of that later. But yeah, that was just a quick voiceover of the workout. I know it wasn't anything intense, but I figured I'd show you guys a yin yang, you know, contrast instead of just because my last video was some crazy hype workout. I just want to show you just, you know, the calm, relaxed, soothing stuff that you do when no one's watching, but it's very, very important when it comes to maintaining your physique and making sure everything's running smoothly so you can have those extremely passionate, violent workouts. All right, so we're going to end the video super, super low budget, you know, iMac webcam, but we got this high budget Joe Rogan microphone to kind of like, you know, balance that out. But anyway, a few things I want to touch upon before we end this video. One, at the end of this month in October in Houston, Texas, there's going to be a massive Gymshark event on the 19th and 20th, which I believe is a weekend. So if you're around the area, you know, Houston, Texas, like somewhere around there, make sure to stop by. It's going to be really, really fun. There's a lot of cool things planned. So 19th, 20th, Houston, Texas, Gymshark, 
definitely coming to that. Just letting you guys know you could find out all like the specific details uh, on Gymshark's site. And just later on in the upcoming days, I'm going to be posting on my like either feed or uh, Instagram story, you know, the specifics of, you know, when I'm going to be there or when anyone else is going to be there. But yeah, that's that Gymshark Houston, Texas. Definitely check that out. And um, just one last thing that I want to say is James and I on our uh, two on one coaching, we're having more slots available. So there's a link in the description if you guys want to fill that out. And I want to talk about one of our clients, Josiah Holbrook, right? Um, pretty much we've been coaching him for an entire month, basically now. And here's a before and after picture. I'm going to put it on the screen. Obviously, as you can see, you know, the before picture lighting is, you know, catastrophic. But, you know, that's the name of the game. But you could aside from that crazy, you know, lighting uh, difference. You obviously see he's made a lot of progress, but the thing that I care about the most and I find the most impressive are his lifts. Uh, his bench went from 245 to 295. He's going to be attempting 300 in the upcoming days, which he's probably going to get. Squat went from 320 to 405, and his deadlift went from 425 to 500. So I have a clip right here of his 425 attempt, you know, before working with us. And if we just look at his form, right? He pumps his hips, you know, to get in a good starting position because trying to get his hips closer to the bar that usually sets you in a better position. But doing that because he's doing it incorrectly, he basically compromises how much tension and tightness he could basically pull in his posterior chain. So he pumps his hips, right? And then he just yanks the bar up. And then as you see, you know, his hips are shooting up before the bar actually leaves the ground, which I've touched upon many times is definitely not what you want to happen. He's pulling, it's coming up, 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 and up. Now you see his upper back, his thoracic spine is rounding. Oh my God, someone's calling me, hang up. Um, his upper back, his thoracic spine is rounding and that's completely fine. You can usually be more powerful pulling that way, but you have to be very, very careful because oftentimes if you push that a little bit too much, your lower back, your lumbar is going to round, which you see his lumbar is rounding here. And that's definitely not a safe situation, not a safe position. And part of the reason he got in that situation in the first place was he wasn't properly able to cue his glutes or quads off the floor due to just kind of yanking it up and not having enough tension overall in his posterior chain so this is a very common position i'm sure you guys find yourself in i've definitely found myself in the past you have the bar like halfway up about to lock out but it's just the center of gravity is so much in front of you like none of your back is tight like whatsoever like right here hamstring is not tight this isn't tight this isn't tight and you just kind of have to yank 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 hitch it up and it's just not a fun way to lift you could very easily get injured that way and as if you guys could see if we play it right here he fails and sets it down so if we look at his um 500 deadlift right here you can see let's just watch it one time through absolutely beautiful so if we analyze that if my space bar works if we analyze that really quick you see he pumps his hips in the perfect spot and then once he pulls he basically the bar comes off the ground in sync with his hips and then you also notice he's more way more patient when it comes to pulling the bar off the ground on the 425 clip he kind of just like eh, tss, just kind of yanks it up and it just it's not a good situation so the benefit of having patience is one you're allowing your glutes and hamstrings i mean glutes and quads i mean and hamstrings two obviously to basically fire correctly so that when you're actually pulling the weight there's an the weight has an equal distribution throughout your entire body rather than just being all you know thrown and shifted to the front and then he has a little bit of that thoracic rounding up there which is fine lumbar is good and then he just like locks it out and just overall looks way more powerful so if you look at him doing if you look at him doing some reps here it just looks absolutely beautiful so what me and James noticed, like, we, we actually had a conversation about this, is how important form is, like, regardless of what program you're running, if your form isn't on point, it could actually be detrimental to your progress. So in an ideal world, if your form's on point and you got, a, like, a specialized program for you, you're going to be good and you're going to make a absolute ton of progress. And we noticed that, I mean, pretty much everyone that we coach so far, like, all their lifts went up, obviously, but the people's lifts that went up the most, from what we noticed, is people that actually we had to tweak their form because their form wasn't optimized in the first place. So yeah, that's just that. Just wanted to show Josiah's progress. I'm going to leave his Instagram handle here if you guys want to follow him. But yeah, that's that. Like I said, Gymshark Houston event. Uh, got a few more slots available for coaching and me and James are also working on, I mean, James and I are also working on having more affordable options in the future when it comes to coaching. And um, yeah, Euphoria pre-workout is coming soon. And yeah, that's that. You guys have any questions, you leave them down below and I'll see you 
in the next video.